I'm Scott Flowers with Cloud Ninjas. And today we're here to talk about Dell Precision R5500 rack mount workstation and how to properly load and configure the system. Well, hey, thanks for stopping by today to learn a little bit more about the Dell Precision R5500. Do us a favor, if you find anything useful in this video, click the like and smash that subscribe. Well, let's get started. Uh, first things first, there are uh, two CPUs inside. It uses uh, Intel Xeon 5500 or 5600 series CPU, which is an LGA1366 socket. Um, as far as I'm concerned, um, what I always recommend for people, uh, there's some really good uh, hex core um, processors for the system like uh, the X5660, X5670, uh, even X, uh, our, the E5645, um, all those are, are, are fairly cheap these days so you can get 12 cores in this for really about like 60 to you know 70 bucks if you go buy those parts so um, as far as CPUs that's what I recommend. Um, uh, concerning memory there are 12 DIMM slots inside it utilizes DDR3 memory uh, there's a number of different speeds that you can use. You can go as low as uh, 1066, 1333, or all the way up to 1600. I will note if you do put 1600 megahertz, it will clock down to 1333. So just know that going in that it, uh, it will clock down. Um, there are a couple different sizes you can use. Uh, you can go as low as 2 gig, 4 gig, uh, 8 gig, or all the way up to 16 gig. Uh, the spec sheet doesn't actually say that it takes 16 gigs, but yes, it does take 16 gigs. Uh, and no, unfortunately, you cannot put 32 gigs in. Uh, we tried putting 32 gigs in, and they just, you know, they don't work, and they won't register with the machine. Uh, there are two types of RAM that you can use. Uh, you can use uh, ECC registered, which is also known as an RDIM, or you can use ECC unbuffered, which is your uh, more traditional server UDIM. Uh, with uh, ECC registered, which is what we recommend, uh, there's a number um, of advantages, but most specifically is the capacity. Uh, you can put in... 192 gigabytes via 12 16 gigs at 1600 megahertz whereas with the uh, ECC on buffered it's a little bit less uh, you can do 48 gigabytes total using um, six eight gigs um, so really you know you can see the the reason why we would recommend using um, EC registered one it's going to be a, uh, cheaper as as a whole on a price per gigabyte and then two you can just get higher scalability so uh, that's what we recommend uh, okay well let's go ahead and open it up and I'll show you a little bit more about the insides uh, the, how to actually open the front um, the uh, the channels and where you want to install the RAM but before we do I'm gonna grab my ESD gear really you never want to be inside the machine without some type of uh, protection because you could potentially shock it and damage the parts so I'll be right back all right now that we have our ESD gear on we're safe to open the machine. First things first, just make sure the latch is set to unlock. If it's not, just grab a Phillips head and turn it to the unlock side. Lift open the tab and remove the top. Pretty much like any machine you've ever been in before. So pretty simple. So this is definitely a little bit unique compared to uh, some of the other systems that are out there. Most of the time uh, when you access the top, uh, you remove an air baffle and then you're able to get to the CPUs and the memory modules. In this case, it's a little bit different. Um, you're actually going to have to pull uh, the whole front piece out. So we'll show you how to do that. First thing, you are going to remove the air baffle right here. You're just going to lift it straight up. It doesn't clip in or anything, so it's just a matter of just kind of being careful because I will uh, be honest, there are a bunch of just cables and everything around here. The design is feels kind of chaotic as far as um, everything that's inside, so I do stress being a little bit careful. Uh, you'll notice these two tabs right here. You're going to push them in. And then you can slide this out. Okay, so when you slide this out, it doesn't really uh, click into place necessarily, but you can just pull it all the way out, and it will stay. It holds up by itself, um, so you won't have to worry as far as like needing to hold it or to put it anywhere. Uh, as I said, there's a bunch of cables right here, um, so you just need to be very careful when you're taking uh, parts in and out. Um, so. Let's, uh, let's go ahead and get, a little, get started. So there's two CPUs we discussed. This is CPU1. CPU1 controls the six DIMM slots over here. CPU2 controls the six DIMM slots over here. Uh, there are uh, three memory channels per CPU, and there are two DIMMs per memory channel. And the nice thing about it is uh, uh, Dell has uh, not only color coded it uh, as far as them being uh, white and black, uh, but they've also labeled it. Uh, you can't really see because the, the fan module here is kind of blocking it, but up here it will actually tell you uh, what each individual DIMM slot is. So for instance, uh, right here this first white slot is actually A1, and then the second white slot is A2, 
and then the third white slot is A3. So uh, currently a local customer of ours actually just dropped us off and asked us to upgrade it for them. Um, they literally only have 16 gigs in for 4 gigs, so it's not very powerful and they're wanting to do um, a couple of different things with it that really just is not going to be able to perform uh, without having um, a higher uh, RAM capacity as a whole. Um, but if you did have it as a more low-end system and you only wanted to put in, let's just say, you know, four modules or six modules, uh, the, the way that they have it configured is actually perfect for having four modules, assuming, of course, you do have uh, dual CPUs. But if you were going to put in six modules, the next slots you would want to put them in would be the two white slots. And people ask us why do we do that uh, why are you just skipping over the black slots uh, it's really simple it's all about just having a uh, a, a proper balance for your your load as a whole if you put them in let's just say the first three slots you've overloaded the first channel and you're getting absolutely nothing out of the third channel um, so really it's just literally you want to have an even amount per channel and that's also how we normally sell uh, our dims as a whole is we want complete sets that match channels so in this case I would always recommend either putting in six or putting in twelve uh, you know just six that you can utilize this third um, memory channel so that's that's how I personally recommend doing it so we're gonna go ahead and actually full uh, pull these out and put some new ones in and show you the uh, the proper way to do it um, so a couple things to note just be really careful with these cables over here they are you know pushing on the module so you need to be very careful so um, I'm going to uh, start I always like to put one hand on top of the modules when I'm taking it out uh, really because sometimes the modules will just fly up when you're pushing the tabs out and the last thing you want is for the module to fly up and potentially damage uh, one of the other sockets or damage the module itself so that's how I personally like to do it um, and then of course just be very careful with the cables themselves okay so just like that it only takes a couple of seconds and you're able to remove the modules okay so we'll get this side next and then we'll go ahead and actually physically start loading them up for you. Okay. You can see these cables are just all over the place. All right, so we're actually going to put in 16 gigs, which is the max that you can do. So this is a 16 gig module, uh, 1600 megahertz, even though, as we noted, it'll clock down to 1333. Um, before we start loading, I wanted to point out a couple of things. Uh, there is a notch right here in the middle, also known as a key. This key is very important because this key is, one, how you, you line up the module, because you'll notice there is a, a notch right here in the middle, and that notch um, is not perfectly in the center, so that d determines if you put you know, how you put your module, um, and if you put it in the wrong way, you could damage the leads on the module, potentially breaking the module, or you could even damage the dim slots, and you might have to get a new motherboard, none of what you want, so just making sure you line it up properly is important, but it's also important because it prevents users from putting in the wrong modules, you couldn't go grab some DDR2 modules and stick them in here, you couldn't go grab some DDR4 modules and stick them in here, just physically wouldn't work, okay? So we're going to start at the beginning of the channel, which is going to be the A1 slot over here, we're going to push the cables out of the way, we're going to line this up properly. And one of the things I want to note is you'll see I am not holding the module. The module is fully inserted by itself, uh, but the module is actually not properly seated. One of the things we hear all the time is, is customers think that they have a bad DIM um, and they need a replacement. And really the DIM's not bad, it's just not fully seated. Uh, it's a really common issue that we see all the time. It doesn't matter if you've been a technician for 20 years or this is your first day on the job. It's a very simple mistake for everyone to make. So here's what you need to make sure you do. When you push the DIM down, you're going to hear this click. That's on the one side, you can hit the other click. So that click is basically the tabs are popping into the sides of the modules, these little tabs on the side, and then it's pulling the leads down and physically making sure the module is 100% in, uh, inserted. Uh, so it's really simple, um, but it's just a, a, little, a little issue that we see a lot, so we just always make sure to point it out so that people don't run into that same mistake themselves. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the fast forward and start loading the rest of these up. So one thing I do want to note, the key is going to flip on this side over here. So you just need to be uh, careful to make sure that you are not seating it the wrong way or putting it in the wrong way. Uh, so I just wanted to point that out. So just like that, 
we can load 192 gigabytes at real in real time that took you know two three minutes it's very easy to do uh, you just need to pay attention to make sure you're you're lining it up properly uh, one other thing I wanted to, uh, to throw out there we do hear a lot of questions about people who want to know some of the comparisons between uh, the R5500 and uh, the Dell Precision T5500 so if you're interested here's a link for uh, the T5500 that you can check out uh, that we have um, just know just to show you some more specs about that so anyhow we're gonna go ahead and put this back together uh, so first thing you want to do is slide this back in so you're gonna push this forward uh, I will say just be very careful with these cables so just watch them to make sure they're not you know brushing up too hard against the modules I mean unfortunately they're going to be touching it because there's really nothing you can do just but I do want to point it out so it's going to click back into place you'll see these tabs kind of stick back in uh, you're going to want to take your air baffle and line this back up um, again just be careful with the cables and the air baffle doesn't really click into place necessarily you'll see it kind of lines up right here uh, and just make sure it's fully inserted and really just like that you're done you put on the top and and call it a day so thanks for stopping by if you made it this far do us a favor click that like and smash that subscribe and if you need any upgrades for your r5500 do us a favor and email sales at cloudninjas.com that's sales at cloudninjas.com we'd love to help you out thanks for stopping by and have a great day